Hello, this is Dave Allen for Mugtronic Questions and Video Magical, and today we're going to have another look at motion to see what we can do with the brush strokes. So let's get started into a motion project and see what we can come up with. Let's put a background in there first of all, just so that we've got something that we can make sure we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to just go for a basic background. Let's have a gradient in there. Okay, so we've got a uh, gradient background in there and we'll lock that so it can't be moved. Now let's see what we can do with some lines and some brushes. So let's go to our brush tool now. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just put a simple stroke on there like this look. And we can't see it. Why can't we see it? It's because we've got this right on clicked here. And to be able to see it, what we need to do is to press play. And we've got some animation happening with our brush stroke. Okay, so a bit of animation there. We didn't have to do it animating at all. So that's one way of putting a line in there and having some animation happening. Just change this uh, shape style to something else. Let's go for let's go for flora. Okay, so this time when I draw a line on there, and it's going to it's going to draw itself on there. So let's just press play and watch that happen. Okay, so that's our brush stroke used in the vine. So this bit at the bottom here is our movie that sort of does the work of the drawing in the leaves and so on for the vine. And this bit here is the animation part of it. So now what we can do with this, of course, we can take the end of this here and extend it out. And basically what that'll do is just make the animation that we drew in there, that line, It'll just make it draw slower over the particular animation that we've got there. And just work out the same length of line, but just do it a little bit slower. Okay, so let's stop those there, and we'll get rid of these vines. Now, this right arm thing here is actually uh, that is actually some that must be some sort of behaviour that gets put in there. You can uh, see we've got a heads-up display there, basic airbrush right on. We can change the stroke length using that there. We can use a stroke offset. So we can say where we want it to start. That gives us the 100% of the stroke and that shortens it down considerably. And you can change the direction of the stroke. So if we want it to go in reverse, that will now play in reverse. And you've got the speed, you've got the recorded speed. And you can also choose if you want it to do some easing in or easing out. And with the easing in and easing out, what that should do is that it should make it start slowly at the beginning and then it'll uh, speed up after that. So when it gets to the start of the animation there, starts in slow and then it speeds up as it goes down the line okay so we've got our line selected let's go to the inspector and see what we can do with it in the inspector we've got uh, the behavior there and the behavior is the draw so that was what we was working with in this heads up display if we go to properties we can do some changing here so in the outline we've got it set to do airbrush we can go for image or we can go for a solid line let's go back to our stroke now with this stroke here you can do some changes here, like you put the jitter in there, it'll give us some uh, different things happening with the line there, look. So it puts a bit more of a dotty line in there, and you can change that randomness there by clicking on generate, and it'll give you a different view each time on that. This right on thing that we've got here, we can actually make that last longer over the period of the animation. Basically that makes it go slower across the line there, so that's another line we've got there. Let's put another line in there. Let's go back to our brush tool again. At the moment it's still set for putting the vine in there, so let's change this to something else. Let's go for something textural. We've got iron filings. We've got some Japanese letters in there, or knitting. And we could go for these little rings. Let's try these rings and see what that does for us. So I'm going to just draw a a line across there and we've got the rings and we'll have it starting at the beginning ending at the end of the animation there and we'll change that right on there as well so let's bring it back to the start there's our circles going in there and again with the circles what we can do with that is we can do some changes to it so if we go to the width here we can change the width of the line we can change the spacing but you can also have these different effects working on shapes so let's go to our shape tool we've got a circle and i'm just going to draw a circle in there let's go to our library a shape style let's try graffiti marker and drag that onto our circle now our circles disappeared for the moment let's go to the inspector properties shape 
Okay, so we've got no filler, no outline, so that's why we can't see it. Put the outline on it. So we can't see our ink drop shape there, which is our brush source, because it's uh, too small a width. Let's increase that there. We can see that we've got our ink drop one brush source on there. We can change the spacing on that as well. So that changes it too. First point offset, so you can give yourself a bit of an arc there if you want to. So you can have it starting or uh, finishing in different places. We can put a fill in there, but we can't have a fill and an outline at the same time with this style. If we look in our shape styles again there, let's go to liquid and put chocolate on there instead. Let's go to our outline. Same sort of thing with that one there. We can change the, the width of it. Let's bring it back down again. Let's change the spacing on there. Change first point offset. So our circle has an animation now because we put that chocolate ink drop thing on there. A lot of these things here you'll kind of have to uh, work out as you go along with adjusting various things to do with this here, such as the width and spacing, and getting it just to uh, look just the way that you want it. Let's go to our library. Can we put a filter on there, can we? Let's give it an aura, drop it in on top of our circle. Makes the circle look completely different again because it's got the aura on there. So let's try something else. Try a crystallize maybe. Okay, that'll be good. Let's put crystallize onto our rings line. So that's changed that again and given us a different effect. We can change the size of the rings and crystallize. And bring that right down small again. And we can change the speed of it as well. Look. So there's a couple of different things that you can do with the lines using the different sort of filters and styles that you can add to your shapes there. And why don't you see what you can do and play with and come up with yourself to make your animations as interesting as possible for your videos. That's all for now for Video Magical and back to any questions and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye now. Yes, it's that time again. It's time for clicking that subscribe button and subscribing to the Wizard Gold Mac 20Q channel. And you'll know when the next video is coming out and it's ready for you to watch.